All right, friends and followers, Anthony Samroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com. So, I just did five and a half days of water fasting. And I want to tell you a little bit about what I experienced. It was one of the most meaningful experiences of my life. Uh, and um, yeah, it was amazing. A hundred, five and a half days without eating. Isn't that a bit extreme? Well, no, it's not extreme. It's pretty normal. Uh, well, not now, but uh, in human history for humans to go for long periods of time without food. And it gives your whole body a chance to clear out anything that it doesn't need because half of your energy goes to digesting your food. So it keeps that energy the re for rest, repair, and all sorts of stuff like that. Now, I've heard from the people that I've been researching through, most of the best stuff starts happening after the third day. So if you want to do it, it's better to do it, you know, six days or nine days than to do three three-day water fasts. Because on the first three days, you lose muscle. That's what I've been told. Then you, your body goes into a state called ketosis and you don't lose muscle anymore. And the cleanse goes much deeper. And I have to say, cravings, wasn't I starving? First three days I had cravings, but fourth day I wasn't that hungry. I actually could have kept on going today, but I had reasons to stop today. That advice that things start happening really well after the third day, totally true. Fourth day, my mood was really, really good. Fifth day, I was an effervescent orb of joy and uh, I've really enjoyed my work. What wasn't good about it? Well, um, my energy levels were low, but that's to be expected. Actually, you know, I didn't want to move around much. I didn't want to do much stuff, um, but that's that's part of the detoxification process. And obviously, if you're not putting in calories, then you're not having searing energy. So the good good thing, the lucky thing for me is, you know, I work as a therapist. So my job isn't physically strenuous. I just really, really loved working with my clients this week. I felt extraordinarily effective and skillful and clear headed. And uh, because I was in such a good mood, my mood transferred. Uh, what I noticed, in the, I was thirsty a lot the whole way through, but the fourth day, I was so thirsty. And the fifth day, I couldn't finish a glass of water, barely, without wanting to top it up again. So that's all good signs, because some of the stuff I've heard, obviously, you do your own research, um, was that your cells can't properly rehydrate if they've kind of got full of garbage, and um, so there's two things going on there. One is you start cleaning out the garbage and you need water to do that. Obviously, you need water to flush out your system. The second thing is that uh, your bo cells start to rehydrate themselves. So you need more water for that as well. And um, the interesting thing is how easy I found it compared to what I thought, because I'm notorious amongst my friends for being like when I get hungry. My my friend Tam, who I co-host the Scottish Liberty podcast with, says, I'm the hungriest motherfucker he ever met. My ex-girlfriend used to sometimes take snacks in her bag when we went out in case I got hungry because I'm intolerable when I'm hungry. My dad is well aware of this notorious condition that I have that I'm intolerable when I'm hungry and makes jokes about it. But the thing is, most of the craving is obviously addictive. It's not, most of your cravings for food are addictive cravings. They're not necessarily for th stuff that you actually need. And you can tell by the kinds of foods that you crave, you know. How do you know if a craving is real or if it's addictive? I've recently discovered a really good way. Uh, I got this, like a lot of the information that I got in water fasting from a guy called Lauren Lockman. You can find him on um, YouTube. He's an expert. He's been running a 
water fast retreat for years and years and years, loads of experience. And he said, well, the thing is, see if you're really hungry for something and you don't have that, you will, if it's a genuine desire, you'll want it the next day even more. But if it's nicotine, if it's um, bread, if it's, if you, for example, if you think you're hungry before you go to bed and you don't eat, which is good because your digestion really shouldn't be working while you're sleeping, it'll make your sleep poorer. Um, if you don't eat in the morning, you'll be even hungrier. Whereas if you weren't really hungry, you'll wake up and not be hungry. So I've had that experience several times. I was like hungry before bed and I made the effort not to eat. And in the morning I wasn't hungry at all. I was like, that's weird. And then one time uh, I went to be bed hungry and I was starving in the morning. So that was a good example for me of, of knowing the difference between actually being hungry or not. If you're lacking in potassium, you might want bananas or watermelon or you know one of these food that, foods that's got potassium in it. So what did I learn? Oh, it was really interesting because I learned a lot about my relationship to food. Like I, uh, I stopped in town a couple of times to go to my flat. Oh, that's another thing I want to mention. The timing was so perfect because I'm house sitting for my parents, looking after their cats, watering their plants and all that. And um, so it was like a little retreat. I had a little retreat and I just like, enjoyed seeing my clients um, while I was here so because most of because most of our work's over skype so what was i saying i was saying about yeah my relationship to food oh my god um when i went into town when i stopped on, uh, in town on the way to my flat i noticed that every time i go into town the thought goes through my head hmm maybe i can st- pop into Tesco's and buy something nice, right? And it's just a totally compulsive thought. It's like, I don't actually need anything, but I think that every time. But that's quietened down a little bit on the fast. And I should really talk about what breaking the fast was like. Well, I was recommended to break the fast with fruit. Nice and simple, easy to digest. So I had some strawberries But in my co-working space, they were doing a lunch and I wasn't going to miss out on a cooked meal. And what I found was I, for the first time in my life, I ate very slowly, little forkfuls, and I really tasted each bite. And I am totally the kind of person that will sit down. The other thing is I had so many appointments today and I'm the kind of person who would just drink tea to get um, strong tea to get caffeine not coffee because I like a good coffee but it makes me jittery if I drink too much of it so but I'll drink a few cups of tea during the day just to get that caffeine boost and I didn't you know I I didn't feel like it I didn't feel like eating bad foods I felt like eating good foods really enjoyed the meal. I ate too much and I really felt that, felt it. But the difference is it's like, it was like seven hours ago I had lunch. By now, I'd usually be hungry again. But because my body's nice and clear and I can listen to it well, I just really don't, I, 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 I'm even dreading the idea of dinner because after I ate so much, I ate way more than I should have. It's just sitting heavy and my body is giving me clear signals like, yeah, please don't put anything else in. Like, this is enough to keep us going for a while. So would I recommend water fasting? Absolutely. Obviously, make sure that you're suitable for it. Check out Lauren Lockman's videos on water fasting. Uh, He's really good. He was YouTube comments and advised me and um, he... His information is super good. We can hear when he's talking that he's an expert on this stuff. He's not just uh, talking from a book that he's read or something like that. He's got great anecdotes of the results that people who've come to his retreat have got. So, yeah, definitely. Like, I'd like to do one again. I'd like to do a a longer one. Um, One of the reasons why I kept going was... I was like, well, if I stop now, 
all the way from the beginning and that would suck so I'm just going to keep going um, the, 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 one of the secrets is those that punnet of strawberries I was really looking forward to breaking my fast with them but every day I was just like oh I can eat them tomorrow because I didn't know how long I was going to go for so, but I woke up the next day and I thought eh, I can go for another day I can eat them tomorrow and by the time I came to the third day I thought well I might as well go till Friday um, so that's what I did I went till Friday and now if I ever have to go a day without food I don't think it'll bother me that much because I'll be like I've gone five and a half days without fruit, food before this is nothing so it's really helped me I feel very sensitive and I feel like I'm more likely to crave the foods I want well my body wants and less likely to indulge in junk yeah, and I really do think I've detoxed because my mood's a lot better. So, if you want to know more, you can send me a little private message on Facebook, Anthony Samroff. And until next time, be yourself. But don't just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.